Now we'd like to start our official meeting. If you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome you to the Claremont County Board of Commissioners meeting for July 22nd, 2020. <laughs> And we will move right on with our regular agenda that's been prepared for us. We've called to order B, approval of regular session minutes of 7-15-2020. Ed, just to call on you for a second, you've joined us by virtual reality. Ed is obviously not here with us in Claremont County, but he is at a remote location. But he has joined us in accordance with policies and requirements here in the state of Ohio. Morning, Ed. Glad you're here. Morning. Morning, Ed. I know you've received the... Uh, regular session minutes of 715. You've had them in advance, had the opportunity to review them and ask for any changes that are made. Do I have a motion to approve the regular session minutes of 715? I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Then move and receive a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Item C, we have a presentation this morning from Mary Mackley Wolf, the Director of Coalition for Drug Free Claremont County about the Claremont County time capsule. Mary, thanks for being here at our meeting sure. and, and thanks for you serving Claremont County in Miami Township. No problem, it's my pleasure. Good morning, everyone. And I bring kind of, I think in this time of really scariness and frustration and anger and all kinds of emotions that we have, we're trying to bring from the coalition's perspective, that sense of community and what does this mean? And quite frankly, we are in a moment of history. And what could we do to maybe reframe what's happening right now? So what we have decided to do through the coalition efforts and as a partnership with you in the county is a time capsule. So this is not a nuclear warhead or anything like that. Uh, I know it's kind of scary looking, um, but there's going to be two of these, and if you've ever watched an old episode of Parks and Rec where they had a, a time capsule and everybody fought over what could go in it, we are suggesting that um, we want that, that sense of belonging, because one of the things that we know um, from the coalition's perspective is when people have a sense of belonging, when they feel connected, that decreases a lot of stress, it decreases drug use, it decreases a lot of things. So what we're hoping to do is basically encourage people and we can do a, a kind of a mini campaign. And what we're hoping is people who see this and as we get more information out, will join in with us. There's all kinds of things that we can put in this capsule. Think about, obviously a face mask would be a good thing to, to remember. Um, we can have, um, the governor's order, we could have emergency declarations, we could have write-ups about facilities, or a hand sanitizer, a little mini hand sanitizer. But we also wanna hear how are people coping out in the community? So we would love for kids to take pictures. You know, you've seen a lot of the sidewalk chalk activities. We've seen kids doing a lot of really cool things. We would love to have the young people, maybe somebody's doing a journal so it's all kinds of options for everybody to be able to participate. And what we're doing right now is, as Mike Bamer is um, helping with this, he's gonna have a press release and then some contact information. And if you don't follow it right now, there is a Coalition for Drug-Free Claremont County Facebook page. All you have to do is get on Facebook and look for the Claremont County um, uh, Drug Free Coalition Facebook page. And we have lots of information on there and uh, ways to get engaged. We figure we're gonna put this collection, we're gonna collect for about six months. So we'll have a, a really cool logo. I don't have a copy of the logo, but Mike will we'll be putting the logo out as well. And about six months, we're gonna place this in the municipal court and then open it up or have instructions to open it up 10 years from now which should be very interesting. And I think, again, I think the idea is really simple. We're trying to find ways to take a bad situation and make it not as bad, but think about it, this is a moment in history. I mean, I remember 9-11. Do you remember 
I remember the Challenger explosion. So there are these key times in history and we're living it right now. So this could be a fun, a fun, in the middle of a pandemic, when you can say fun, that's a lot. So I just wanna thank Mike for, for his work on this and Claire, um, David, I know you've worked with the coalition before. Um, Ed, I, how you doing? <laughs> good, good. Um, and so if anybody wants to reach out, I will have my contact information. And I know in the press release that we're releasing, I'll have contact information there as well. We're looking forward to engaging people in a positive way to really just make a difference. And again, build those protective factors. When our people are connected, we, we have less problems. So thank you guys. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you for all you do. Is, is your point of interest like right now? Is it like in the next months of what, what's going on? Is well, I think what'll be interesting, I mean, I, I think we all need to think about this one. We're coming up on school and we know school is gonna look really, really different. So this could actually also be an activity that the school children could incorporate into some of their work, whether they're online learning or whether they're, because I think it's gonna be interesting to look back and go, oh my goodness, this is how we had to do things. You could take a picture of a Zoom meeting, you could, uh, you know, but I think it's a way of, again, the perspectives from different, different groups of people. So we have people that are, you know, you might have a healthcare person in your family. There may be somebody who is older um, we've got younger kids. We know that restaurants and businesses, I mean, everybody's been impacted, but this is a moment in history that we're, we're going to want to be able to look at what was happening so that people will be able to say, okay. And I think there's a lot of really positive things that are going on that we maybe aren't talking about as enough. And this is a way to capture that so that when we look back again, we can say, okay, it, yeah, this was bad but here's some good things we were doing. And I think that's the hope is really, we're just trying to be cognizant of, it's important to be hopeful right now because it's very, very hard for some people. Um, and we all are hating the masks, but you know what? If I only have to wear a mask for a couple of months to, to make this thing go away, I'm, I'm all in for, the, for that. So, um, but thank you guys again. This is just gonna be, I think, tremendously fun and we're going to try to to get some more information out about it in various ways. Great. So. And, and Mary, thanks for oh, you know, taking the lead on you. this. No problem. And, and thanks for your work on the Drug Free Coalition. No, you're very welcome. I mean, it's a passion. I, I love prevention. And I think any time we can get further upstream to the problems that we're having and prevent them from ever happening, we're going to be at an advantage um, as the whole community, as a society. Uh, so we work again with our young people on primary prevention. We don't want young people using drugs and alcohol. It's not good for their brains. And we want some amazing brains to continue to grow. So thank you guys. I appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank Mary, you. thanks for all you do. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Ed. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Sure. Board, I would ask a little latitude to change the agenda order real quick. I'd like to move item H up for county staff elected official discussions. I understand that Julianne Nisbet is with us on by uh, virtual here on the, on the screen and has an update for us on the COVID-19 pandemic. Morning, Julianne. Good morning, thank you um, for having me this morning. So I'm just gonna give a very quick brief update this morning. Um, where we're at with numbers, we have 643 cases. Um, that's up about 111 cases um, total on confirmed cases from confirmed and probable cases from last week. Um, we're up though to about 207 active cases and that's up about um, 56 from last week. There are changes though in guidance and releasing people from isolation. Um, so we may see some of our active cases um, be able to be released a little bit sooner from isolation. So the CDC um, last Friday updated some of their guidance, um, put information out <clears throat> through a health alert network on Monday that they're changing some of the criteria to release individuals from isolation for confirmed cases on it. Um, so for the symptom-based criteria, there in the past there's been two methods, a symptom-based and then a test-based. On the symptom-based criteria, um, they had that you had to be a minimum of 10 days and 72 hours fever-free without medications and symptoms improving. Um, they're dropping the 72 hours down to 24 hours. So you still have the 10-day minimum. 
um, on it, but um, you only have to be fever free and symptoms improving for 24 hours versus the 72 on it. Um, that kind of goes back in line with standard fever protocol that's normally used for return to work or school um, for many other diseases and illnesses that we have on it. Um, so the 10 day minimum is in fact for the majority of people, there is actually a 20 day minimum for those that are um, severely ill and severely immunocompromised um, because it takes them a little bit longer to get over. They have a minimum um, of a 20 day requirement. Um, CDC is no longer recommending the test based method for the majority of people. There are some rare circumstances where that may be used. Um, but they are no longer recommending the test-based method. You had to have two negative tests within 24 hours of each other after your, your kind of 10-day minimum in order to be removed from isolation. Um, we saw some of our healthcare workers, um, some employers that, that went that route and used that method. Um, and the problem that you have is people can still test positive for weeks afterwards, um, potentially months. So it was keeping people um, in isolation for a very long period of time. They are no longer recommending that. Um, so everyone really will pretty much be based off of the, um, the symptom-based um, method to remove individuals from isolation for that. Um, and then kind of the, the last piece of it is if a person um, is confirmed um, and for whatever reason they become exposed to another contact again um, for up to three months after um, they, they were initially confirmed, um, they do not have to be um, put into quarantine. So they're, they're kind of estimating that we're at least getting, you know, three months worth of immunity um, out of it that they're seeing that most people are not getting reinfected during that time frame. Um, so for those individuals, they would not have to be put back into quarantine. Now, after that three months, they have to go back to kind of um, following that standard protocol um, for quarantine if they're exposed to a confirmed case. So that's really all I have for you today, unless you have any other questions. Julianne, talk a second about our red designation. I know the last time that, that you had spoken to us, you know, there's seven criteria involved there. Um, have you seen any changes in those particular aspects? If, if we had any of the criteria that we've now well exceeded, or do we have any that were under? If you could just go through that for a second. Yeah, so um, keeping in mind some of the data sets, um, we, we don't have. The state has those as far as the, um, you know, the visits to, to physicians. They are working, the state, we have requested that they put that information out publicly. Um, they are working on trying to get that available. So those I don't have the data points on um, right now. I, you know, when the governor does his press release, they typically update profiles, which will have that data in it. Um, our case data, we're holding about the same, just kind of anecdotally what I can tell you from last week. Um, now they do use data, the data lags a little bit. Um, we still have high counts, but they're holding um, kind of around some of those same numbers with it. Um, so it'll still keep us probably ticked over enough that we're gonna remain in the red. Um, we just kind of have to wait and see how that trend line continues to look. Um, when you go on and you look at the the data, there's always that grayed out area of preliminary data on the state database. Um, and that's really because as cases come in, they get tracked by illness onset date. Um, so, so they get kind of backfilled in. And, and sometimes even for us, there's a little bit of a, of a lag of a day or two. So we have to go back and see what that looks like to see if we're, if we're starting to flatten off a little bit or if we're gonna continue on that um, upward trend. And okay. I would say from, from what we see in hospitalization, ICU admissions, um, it is still slightly above the limits, but it's holding pretty stable. Okay. Okay. That's good. And then one other thing, if you would just talk about a moment, I know you and I have had conversations. We, we get an opportunity to communicate regularly. Um, I, I know one of the concerns as far as communicable spread here in Claremont County is just uh, what you've seen as a health commissioner, you know, uh, us, included, not paying attention to when we're going to be around other people, really protecting ourselves as far as social distancing and, and masks. Could you just talk about that scenario for a while? I think, I, think the, uh, I think citizens of Claremont County need to hear that and need to understand what that concern is for that lack of protocol. Yeah, so um, really where we're seeing a lot of the spread come from is kind of those, um, it, it, it's not per se the, the businesses and, um, 
you know, more regulated kind of, of entities. I think a lot of them are really trying to do a good job with that. Um, we continue to work with them. But what we see is it's the social gatherings. And I think people have a tendency to let their guard down, um, particularly when they're around family and friends. And when I say family, I'm not talking your immediate family in your household, but if you're having family gatherings, um, there's the sense that we know, know people. And um, so, you know, there's not mask wearing going on. There's a lot of hugging. We're not abiding by that six feet of social distancing in those type um, of environments, you know, people that are kind of having the backyard parties and, and different things, that is actually where we're seeing a lot of the spread come from. Um, and then people with just bigger social networks and they kind of go from one group to the next and, you know, over a two day period, they may, may come into contact and infect, um, you know, uh, several people as they kind of move about. So that is really where we're seeing people are having a tendency to let their guard down. And that's where we would really like people to kind of just remain vigilant on it. Um, we know people want to get together and see their family, but if you can do that, you know, in an outdoor environment where you can socially distance out and really kind of maintain your six foot of social distancing um, on it, you know, we, we know everybody wants to, to, you know, kind of hug individuals and, and get up close and personal. Now is just not the time um, to do that just really kind of continuing to abide by those when you're thinking about your social settings. I'm not saying don't have the neighbors over for a barbecue, but if you have the neighbors over for a barbecue, there's no reason why you can't socially distance at six feet in your backyard so that you're not transferring it, or they're simply going to be end up becoming close contacts and have to be in quarantine. Um, so just think about, you know, in your social settings, you know, put the mask on when you're going to go out and enter businesses. Um, you, you can't always control, you may have the best intentions of remaining six foot from somebody, um, but you can't necessarily control that in all of those settings. So, so we want, you know, people to be abiding by um, the mask requirements and putting those masks on when they're um, going out and visiting those businesses. Um, you know, and from those business aspects, you want to protect their employees. They want to remain open. They want to remain in business. Um, and, you know, if a large number of their employees get infected, they're not going to be able to continue to do that. Um, so just continuing to really remain vigilant in those settings. And, and you know, I, I think one of the things that maybe we, we might not do a good job on is actually relating, you know, personal experiences. You talked about, you know, barbecues and, and get togethers. And, you know, one of the things that I would say is, you know, some of my family members who are medical professionals have been impacted by that. And they believe that the social distancing, um, even though they, they knew how to do that, they work in this field every day was not sufficient. And in hindsight, they believe that masks would have would have made a big difference. But it it has taken 12 medical workers out of the the routine daily ability to, you know, service people who are experiencing COVID. So your point is well taken. You know, uh, we just need to use some common sense in Claremont County. You know, if uh <clears throat> If you can social distance appropriately and, and you're going to sanitize your hands when when you have left those places, that that's a great protocol. But if you like we've always talked, if you're gonna be within six feet of people and you think there's an opportunity there because of you know close relationships that you might uh, violate that, then by all means wear a mask. You know, I mean this is something that uh, there's been a lot of speculation that we could put this thing on the ground pretty quick if we would follow those those protocols. Yeah, and I think you really have to, it kind of brings home the point of layering. You know, we've talked about like the Swiss cheese and the layering of things. Um, and you have to really put all of them together um, to be able to, to, to kind of stop, you know, the spread. We're, we're not gonna eliminate it. We're not, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily realistic. Um, at this point, um, hopefully we'll, we'll get there at some point in the, in the future, or at least tamping it down to a point that it's not such a concern within the community. Um, but, you know, as, as we think about, you know, people wanting to resume additional things, kids going back to school in the fall, it is really important right now that we use all of those measures effectively together um, to kind of minimize that spread. Yep. Any other questions for Julianne Bohr? No. Julianne? Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to update us. Um, make sure you get some time for yourself. I know you're you're in this thing 24 seven. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks, Julia. I'll move on with the agenda. Um, D, consent agenda. Board, I know a consent agenda has been prepared for you. You've had it prior to this meeting, had an opportunity to review it, ask questions. Are there any 
uh, items on that consent agenda that need to be removed for further conversation or discussion? None. Uh, none for me. Here, hearing none, I'd ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. Second. Then moved and received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Then we'll go to E, the non-consent agenda, which starts on page four. First item on the non-consent is item number eight, recommendation to the Board of Claremont County Commissioners adopt resolution 119-20, resolving to approve payments to vendors in the amount of $2,079,947.59. As set forth in the BCC approval invoice report for checks dated July 22nd, 2020, BCC directed prepaid invoice report and or procurement card transaction report as presented by the county auditor on 7-20-2020 and further authorizing the county author, auditor to issue warrants for the same pursuant to section 319.16 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion to approve payment of the bills? So moved. A second. Then moved and received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Item number nine, Claremont County Water Resources. Morning, Lyle. <laughs> I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Water Resource Department, and item number nine is a recommendation to adopt resolution number 120-20, resolving to determine to make improvements relative to the construction, operation, and maintenance of the TUB water treatment plant well rehabilitation project located in Pierce Township and designated as project number 6401-60189 in conformance with the detailed plan specifications and estimates of cost and financing all of which will be paid from one or more of any combination of the Waterworks Capital Improvement Fund, any portion of any federal or state grant or loan should such become available and or by the issuance of notes or bonds pursuant to section 133.08 of the Ohio Revised Code and payable from revenues derived from water rates and charges levied for the operation of the Claremont County Waterworks System and subsequent thereto to approve the request to advertise for bids for, for the project pursuant to the plans and specifications and to authorize the clerk of the board to place a legal notice in a newspaper of general circulation on Thursday, July 30th, 2020, schedule a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting on Thursday, August 13th, 2020 at 10 a.m. with bids to be received until, until 2 o'clock p.m. local time on Thursday, August 20th, 2020 in the Austin Board of County Commissioners, 101 East Main Street, where well, they will be publicly opened and read aloud shortly thereafter, and the notice will also be posted on the county's website. So this project includes uh, rehabilitation of four of our uh, water wells at the, at the uh, PUB water treatment plant. The uh, engineer's estimate for the project is $250,000. Lord, you've heard the reading of item number nine for the Water Resources Department for the PUB water treatment plant well re rehabilitation project. Do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. Second. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Item 10. Item 10 is a recommendation to adopt resolution number 121-20, resolving to determine to make improvements relative to the construction, operation, and maintenance of the Elwyn, Devlin, Teakwood, and Bordeaux water main replacement project located in Miami Township. Uh, it's designated as project number 6401-60162 in conformance with the detailed plan specifications and estimates of cost and financing, all of which shall be paid from, from one or more com a combination of the Waterworks Capital Improvement Fund, Ohio Public Works, uh, or OPWC grant, any portion of any federal or state grant or loan should, should such become available and or by the issuance of notes or bonds pursuant to section 133.08 of the higher revised code and payable from revenues derived from water rates and charges levied for the operation of the Claremont County Waterworks System and subsequent thereto to approve the request to advertise for bids for the project pursuant to the plans and specs and to authorize the clerk of the board to place a legal notice in a newspaper of general circulation on Thursday, July 30th, 2020. Schedule a non mandatory pre-bid meeting on Thursday, August 13th, 2020 at two o'clock p.m. with bids to be received until two o'clock p.m. local time on Thursday, August 20th, 2020. Uh, in the Office of the Board of County Commissioners, 101 East Main Street, where they will be publicly opened and read aloud shortly thereafter, and the legal notice will also be posted on the county's website. So this involves replacing uh, over 6,000 feet of water main with new 8-inch water main. 
Uh, the, the original water mains were installed in 1959 and 1964. Uh, the engineer's estimate on the project is $959,567. And uh, we do have an OPWC grant for this for, uh, that pays for $400,000 of the project. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 10 for rehabilitation project for the water main uh, located in Miami Township. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion for law? No. Roll call. I almost said Judy. Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. I'm number 11. Thanks, Lyle. Uh, I'm still up. Yep. <laughs> All right. Item, item 11. Yeah, I'm covering this for him. Um, item 11 is a recommendation to execute a contract for services between. Claremont County and Train US Incorporated out of Cincinnati for the replacement of condensing units and controls at the wastewater laboratory located at 1003 US 50 in Milford in accordance with the scope of services uh, for a total amount not to exceed $90,394 effective upon execution by the Board of County Commissioners with said services to be completed within 120 days of the company's receipt of a signed contract and notice, notice to proceed pursuant to the terms and conditions set forth therein and contingent upon the release of the purchase order. So this, uh, as it mentions, replaces the HVA system at the wastewater laboratory. Um, this contract was developed using the Master Intergovernmental Cooperative Purchase Agreement with Hartford, Harford County Public Schools in Maryland and the U.S. Communities Government Purchasing Alliance, which is a public bidding system for many uh, uh, governments across the country and, and Claremont County is a registered member of the uh, U.S. Communities Government Purchasing Alliance. Or do you heard the reading of item number 11? Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. Second. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Thanks, Lyle. Sorry about that. I saw Hannah's, Hannah's name on that next one come up. I thought we were going to hear from her. No problem. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. Item number 12. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Agenda item number 12 is a recommendation for myself, Wade Grabowski, Director of Claremont County Facilities Management Department, with a concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to adopt resolution number 122-20, Resolving to authorize the sale of real estate no longer necessary for public use pursuant to and in compliance with sections 307.09A and 307.10A of the Ohio Revised Code and to authorize the clerk of the board to place a legal notice in the newspaper of general circulation not less than 30 days prior to the date of the auction with the auctions to occur at a date and time mutually agreed upon by the auctioneer and the Claremont County Administrator and to execute the contract for professional services with Craig Lytle Auctioneer right here out of Batavia, Ohio in accordance with Exhibit A, attached here to and made a part thereof, at a sum not to exceed 1200 in advertising costs and 5% commission based upon the final bid price for any of the properties sold at auction, with a reserve sale price of not less than 60% of the appraised value of each property as outlined below. Uh, notice will also be posted on the Claremont County's URL site um, at least 30 days prior to the date, mutually agreed upon by the County Administrator and Craig Lytle Auctioneer, LLC. So there are four properties that will be auctioned. Um, the first two would be the Corcoran West building and the Corcoran East uh, office building right here on Main Street at 175 and 179. The vacant land that we own on Clough Pike, which is right across from the BMB, and the 1192 US Route 52 property um, in New Richmond, Ohio. Lord, you've heard the reading of item number 12 for the uh, auction of, of properties that are no longer needed for, by Claremont County. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Thanks, Wade. I'm going to bring number 13 in, sir. Okay. Item number 13. Morning, Karen. Morning. 
Item number 13 um, is a recommendation by myself, Karen Chera, who is the director of the Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to adopt resolution number 123-20, resolving to request the county auditor to certify to the Board of County Commissioners the total current tax valuation of the county and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by a renewal tax levy in the amount of 7,500 mil for each $1 of valuation, which amounts to seven and one half cents, 0.075 per $100 valuation for a period of five years to be placed on the 2021 tax duplicate for first collection in 2022 and for four years thereafter through 2026 for the purpose of providing or maintaining alcohol, drug addiction, drug addiction and mental health services in and as it relates to the submission of the question of the tax to the electorate of the entire territory of Claremont County, Ohio at the general election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd of 2020, pursuant to section 5705.221A and in compliance with section 5705.03B of the Ohio Revised Code. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 13 for a renewal levy for the Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? I think it's noteworthy that we've had a presentation. Mm -hmm. This is for a renewal, not, renewal for, not for an increase. No, no new taxes, correct. <laughs> and this will uh, provide, maintain alcohol, drug addiction, and mental health services as it relates to the submission of question of the tax on the electorate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Karen, you you and your organization have done an excellent job with uh, with those issues here in, in Claremont County. I Thank think it, I think it speaks volumes when we talk about the opiate epidemic that we experienced and the uh, the headway that's been made in that particular that particular effort. So. I thank you for your hard work and your board. Thank you. And I'd like to count, uh, thank the entire county because again, everything we do in this county is a collaboration. We couldn't do it alone. It takes all the partners, um, but we have great partners and we have worked well together. And just for the um, voters information, we have had this levy since 1981. So it has been a, a long history of supporting us and, and giving us those additional funds to help serve the people of this county. And, and I think that's noteworthy that, you know, the citizens of Claremont County understand that this is a, uh, an important priority here and, and obviously they put uh, their money where their concern is. So uh, thanks for, for all you do. Any, you fur again. any further discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Thanks, Karen. Again, thanks for your support. It means a lot. Thank, thank, thank you. Karen. Item number 14. Good morning, commissioners. Item number 14 is a recommendation of myself, Timothy Dick, Director of Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to adopt resolution number 124-20, resolving to request the County Auditor to certify to the Board of County Commissioners the total current tax valuation of the county and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by a renewal tax levy in the amount of eight tenths mil for each $1 valuation, which amounts to eight cents per $100 valuation for a period of five years to be placed on the 2021 tax, tax duplicate for the first collection in 2022 and for four years thereafter through 2026 for the support of children's services and the care and placement of children in and as it relates to the submission of the question of the tax to the electorate of the entire territory of Claremont County, Ohio at the general election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, pursuant to section 5705.24 and in compliance with section 5705.03B of the Ohio Revised Code. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 14. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second. Been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? No, thank you. Just thank you for all your work. Again, again, Tim, this is obviously a recommendation for uh, the renewal of the levy, no increase, 
stays exactly the same. That's correct. Anything further, board? No. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey? Aye. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Thank you. Item number fifth. Thanks, Tim. Item number 15. Item number 15, uh, board, we put on the agenda as a disposition. Uh, Cindy Gramke is here. Should you have any questions about their levy request pursuant to your uh, report or your presentation from last week? Board, prior to uh, addressing item number 15, I'd ask if there's, I'd open it for discussion. Are there any questions or uh, that you would like to ask Cindy? She's here to represent this levy request for senior services. No, I went, I reviewed it again. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. I genuinely appreciate the opportunity to, to come back just in case you have any questions. I think we've communicated a little bit in between. So I appreciate your consideration for our request. Thank you. So therefore board, we have the opportunity to uh, discuss and or uh, comment about the request for the levy. Um, for the Board of Commissioners, a disposition of the adoption of a levy for an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for providing or maintaining senior services or facilities and requesting the county auditor to certify those matters. Uh, before you, there's been a motion prepared um, in both directions for consideration. One is for uh, this board to uh, consider the uh, increase for the levy and uh, obviously it would be to approve the existing levy and then the, is it three tenths of a mill increase? Obviously, uh, Cindy has represented that need here before in front of this board and told us how many senior services, 120% increase since 2005 that we expect to experience here in Claremont County, the waiting list that they have for senior housing and all of the services and things that they provide for seniors and seniors are considered age 60 and, and older. Correct. And I think when you were here, that range that you serve uh, goes from 60 years of age to 105 here That's in correct. Claremont That's County. Correct. So I, I try to remember that pretty well. Yeah. Um, and then also we have a resolution that's prepared that would be for, instead of the additional increase, it would be for renewal levy of the current levy that that's on the books. Um, I'd open the floor to conversation. Is there uh, any will of the board or conversation or clarification discussion about either resolution that uh, you would like to consider? The only comment I'd like to make at this time is that I understand the great work that this is that you do. I understand all the volunteers and all the hours and the increased need um, my concern is just one of the commissioners is that at this time, um, the financial crisis that everyone is under, et cetera, I just, I have a, a reservation of putting any increase anymore on taxes since we have two other levies that are also going to be on at the same time. And, and that is just my position is at this point is to ask for, to, for a resolution not to include an increase. Commissioner Humphrey, comment or discussion? I agree with Claire that uh, with the financial crisis that everyone is facing on an individual basis, that it's not time for an increase. Although I recognize that the need is there and uh, it would be spent appropriately. I just, I'm concerned that it's not time for an increase and I would, I would uh, support the the uh, resolution to just do the renewal. Then I am going to read a resolution, Board of County Commissioners, recommendation of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator to adopt resolution number 125-20, resolving to request the County Auditor to certify to the Board of Commissioners the total current tax valuation of the county and the dollar amount of revenue that will be generated by a renewal levy and the amount of one and three tenths mil for each one dollar of valuation, which amounts to 13 cents per hundred dollars per hundred dollar valuation for a period of five years to be placed on the 2021 20, tax duplicate for the first collection in 22 
and for four years thereafter through 2026 for providing or maintaining senior service senior citizen services or facilities as it relates to the submission of the question of the tax to the electorate of the entire territory of Claremont County at the general election to be held on Tuesday, 11-3-20, pursuant to section 5705.19Y in compliance with section 5705.03B of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. Second. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? No. Roll, roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Humphrey? Aye. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you for being here. We, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of the board, too, we genuinely appreciate and greatly respect the position of the commissioners. The board did look very, very diligently at this. They felt with you know, do do deliberation that they they needed to come forward um, and and ask what they did since there hadn't been an increase in 20 years. But believe me, you know, we will continue to live well within our means, which we always have. And we have been prioritizing heavily since 2008. And we are very diligent in that effort. And we will continue to be responsible stewards of taxpayer dollars in our county. Thanks, Thank Cindy. You. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you, Ed. I'm number 16. I'm number 16 is a request to or disposition of filling a vacancy on the Claremont County uh, Port Authority. I believe you've all been given three applicants that have submitted applications for it. Uh, the Port Authority did meet, uh, I believe, two, three weeks ago. And they did discuss the three applicants and they didn't really come to a consensus um, on as to who to recommend to place on the, uh, the Port Authority. Uh, so you do have the uh, applicants in front of you. One thing I'm, I might want to add is that Mr. McNamara takes over as Economic Development Director in two weeks. Um, if you're not ready to make an appointment just yet, you might want to let Mike take a look at the applicants and uh, uh, see how he wants to proceed forward. I think the Port Authority is in a position right now to really do some great things in the future with economic development and uh, getting the right people on that board is definitely crucial to uh, 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 furthering the port's agenda in uh, assisting Claremont County in the financing arm of economic development. And board, since the floor is obviously open for discussion right at the current moment, I would bring to your attention that the Port Authority has been having a hard time reaching a quorum because of the availability due to absence of members and the availability of members due to the COVID-19. <clears throat> so therefore, uh, you've received an application. Uh, I believe you know who the applicants are. Do I have a recommendation from the board of who you would like to appoint to the Port Authority? I believe I have we have an application from Daryl Rowe. Okay. And, uh, the RE construction, I believe he would be a good candidate for the Port Authority Board. Do we also have a second position about to be opened or not? I, I understand that there will be a second position that will be forthcoming. Uh, correct. Mr. Van Zandt um, will no longer be with the Chamber of Commerce uh, come August and September. So we will have another position open as well, a pinch of that, because he will no longer be eligible to serve on the Port Authority. I would like to just chat with Joy Lytle to see if she'd be interested in taking that position. Uh, she's become the new executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, and I think that would be an appropriate person, but I think I haven't had an opportunity to talk with her yet. Okay. Have, have we received a formal resignation from Matt Van Sant? Not at this time, not yet. It, it will be forthcoming, but it's not, uh, it's not official yet. So Mr. Van Zandt still continues to serve. Okay. I, I would request at this time that possibly we table this till Mike McNamara gets in here since he's going to be the lead in the Port Authority um, and have an opportunity to meet the people and review the all the applications himself, give Joy time to, if she would like to serve on this board, to bring her application in and let him review it with the rest of the board and let them make that determination. If we could do that. I'm Did okay with that. Okay. Okay then um, 
I would entertain a motion that we table item number 16. And when would you board what's your desire as far as the date to table it to? Do you want to table it to our next meeting? Well, that'd be for. Or we're talking Mr. McNamara comes on August the 3rd. August is that correct? 3rd, yeah. Uh, Holly, what would be our next? Next available session would be. Um, we could have August 5th or the following week, August 12th. August 5th might not give him the opportunity to um, afford him the opportunity to do the interviews that you would like. So perhaps August 12th. Okay. Then I would, I would ask the board for a motion to table item number 16 until our regular session meeting of August the 12th. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Been moved, received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Item number 17. Aye. Just real quick on that. That's what his first priority is going to be Port Authority when he gets here. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's I'm turning him loose on that one first. Good. Just okay. So the board knows. All right. Thank you. I'm number 17. Uh, number 17, uh, we have a vacancy in the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we did receive a recommendation from Mr. Jeff Blum, president of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, that Mr. Jim Collins uh, would be an outstanding uh, addition to the board as he is a Loveland resident, and they're looking for some representation from the Loveland area. Are there board? two positions there also? Uh, I think Holly could probably fill you in a little bit better on that one, but I think what there are Commissioner Corcoran. There was also applications received from Samantha Hurst as well as Margaret Hayes for this position. Was your question, Commissioner Humphrey? Is it that is there a second opening? Yes. Is there a second opening? I don't think there is. Let me see here. Not that I'm aware of. That well, aware. there with some of the um, the hoteliers. There may be some some switching of some of the hoteliers, so we we may have uh, some things come up, but we're just not at that stage yet to know. I thought, I thought we knew that the Holiday Inn uh, representative was going to had resigned, and we had an opening there. Commissioner Humphrey, we've asked um, Mr. Blom to get us a resignation letter or a resignation date so that we could be advised um, as to what date he did submit his resignation. Um, in the event um, that that would be Mr. Jerry Yates, um, in the event that we do have that position open, um, Mr. Nick Baker, who previously served in that capacity as a hotelier, he would also be interested in coming back to complete his term. Um, just as a, a reminder, Mr. Baker was appointed um, some time ago. We're actually still in Mr. Baker's original term. He was transferred to Dayton to a Fairborn hotel in Dayton, also with a Holiday Inn. Um, he is now coming back to our Holiday Inn Eastgate and replacing Mr. Yates. And he has expressed interest in resuming his position um, on the CVB at that time. So we were going to consider that possibly next week. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. I kind of heard about that and thought it would be a good uh, fit for him yes, to sir. take that position. But if we're not, if we haven't received a resignation yet, we should wait. And that's what we're waiting on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And before we, we decide if we're going to move forward with an appointment or not, it's noteworthy that Mr. Blum, who is the director of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, has sent us a recommendation uh, for Jim Collins. Right. So therefore, board, I would... Uh, Propose a resolution that the Board of County Commissioners resolve to appoint uh, Jim Collins to serve on the Claremont County Convention and Visitors Bureau for his or her first full uh, three year term effective 722 through 722 2020 through 721 2023. Do I have a motion uh, for approval of the resolution to appoint Mr. Collins? I make the motion. Second. Then move and receive the second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Humphrey? Aye. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Item number 18. Um, Mary Rose? Aye. Aye. Oh, there's Mary. 
Good morning, Mary Rains from Office Not of Mary Rains. Budget. Good morning, Commissioner Painter, Commissioner Corcoran, and Ed. Good morning uh, to you. Number 18 is a recommendation to increase the 2020 annual appropriations for the general fund for adult detention, corrections, other expenses in the amount of $2,663.41. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 18 for a change in appropriation for adult detention corrections in the amount of 26.63 and 41 cents. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. A second. Been moved, received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. <clears throat> That concludes our consent agenda as proposed. Uh, are there any additions to the agenda? At this time, we do not have any. Okay. Uh, but we do have an executive. Hearing no additions, we do have a public meeting here starting at 11 o'clock. So I would ask um, for a motion to uh, recess our meeting for about seven minutes until 11 o'clock. Do I have a motion to go into recess? I'll make the motion. Second. Then moved, received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. We will stand in recess until 11 o'clock. At such time, we will conduct further business and enter into a public hearing on a proposed name train for Carmela Drive to Hauser Lane in Batavia Township. Thank you. Board, I'd like to call this meeting back from recess to regular session and move to item number J on our regular regular agenda for a public hearing on the proposed name chain of Carmela Drive, T526 to Hauser Lane, located in Batavia Township. Today is the date and time location for public hearing as published in the Claremont County Sun on June the 25th, 2020. For the receipt of public comments relative to the request of the Batavia Township Board of Trustees to change the name of Carmela Drive to Hauser Lane, all of which is located in the village of Batavia, Claremont County, Ohio, pursuant to and in compliance with section 5541.04 of the revised code. And just as a reminder, if there's anyone in attendance in the meeting today, please sign in, please, uh, Place your name on the sign-in sheet right here by the door if you haven't done so. I understand that we have a Claremont County Engineers report that will be given by Craig Reisner, a deputy surveyor here in Claremont County. Craig? Good afternoon. Craig Reisner, Claremont County Engineers Office. Um, per your request, we reviewed a Batavia Township Resolution 06-05-2020 which is an amendment to resolution 03-01-2020 and is requesting the road name change of Charmalee Drive, Township Road 526 to Hauser Lane. Um, the amendment to the resolution was the original request was to change the name to Clementine Court. And at some point the uh, township decided to amend that request. And so the current uh, name change request is for Hauser Lane, H-O-U-S-E-R Lane. Um, the Claremont County Engineer's Office does not oppose the requested road name change. Um, there are four residences that abut um, Charmalee Drive. None of them have an address on Charmalee Drive. If the name change is approved, road maintenance will remain under the jurisdiction of Batavia Township and it will remain a township road um, the ODOT mileage road, the ODOT road mileage length for Batavia Township will not change. However, it will be assigned a new township road number. So this is um, all of Charmalee Drive as shown in Charmalee subdivision recorded in plat book D page 210 of the Claremont County Recorder's Office. And this was a record plat from 1952. Um, This is partially caused by the uh, village of Amelia. Um, when Batavia Township accepted roads that were previously located in the village of Amelia, 
they wound up with two, two sections of Charmilly Drive that do not connect. So uh, we have, a, and there's a residence in between them now. So we have a, a, a street name that is Charmilly on both ends and it cannot connect in the middle. So the, the township has decided to, uh, to uh, put in a road name request to, to fix this problem. Um, the county engineer's office has not received any correspondence in favor or in opposition to the road name change. And before we go any further, I'd just like to say, uh, excuse me for my mispronunciation, it is Sharma Lee Drive. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Craig, board? No questions. Then I would uh, move to request for comments. Do we have anyone here in favor of the proposed name change today? If we do, please uh, approach the uh, podium, state your name and your address for the record. Good morning, Commissioners. Adele Evans, Batavia Township Administrator, 1535 Clough Pike, Batavia 45103. And I am here today to ask the um, commissioners to approve this request by our Batavia Township trustees. It, as Mr. Reisner stated, it is due to the Amelia dissolution disillusion we um, found ourselves with two road names uh, with the same name that could not connect and for public safety reasons uh, we needed to change one of those and it made the most sense to change the section of Charmilly off of State Route 132 that didn't have any addresses associated with that. Uh, we did send uh, letters to all of the residents along Virginia Drive because they're the ones that are accessing that portion of Charmilly on a daily basis and we initially did request for the name Clementine Court. We received some feedback from residents and the name Hauser Lane was suggested. Um, it's our understanding that um, Mr. Hauser was actually a county commissioner back in um, the late 40s, early 50s. And Sharma Lee and Virginia were named after his daughters. So Hauser Lane kind of came up as a way to honor the whole family. So I am requesting the commissioner's approval of the name change request. Thanks, Adele. Board, any, any questions for Ms. Evans? I have none. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Adele. You. <clears throat> then I would move to item B. Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition of the proposed changes? No one? No one else speak. Okay. And Holly, have we received any comments or correspondence relative to the proposed name change? We have not, Commissioner Painter. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any further comments before I close the public hearing? None? Then I would close the public hearing portion and we will move on with our regular agenda. Thank you. We do have, if you, for your consideration before executive session, we have proposed to add on for uh, uh, disposition of this public hearing if you so choose. Okay. So we do have a proposed add-on board. I would um, ask for a motion to um, add this uh, resolution onto our agenda. It is a resolution. Uh, the number is 126-20, resolving to change the name of Charmilly Drive to Hauser Lane, located in Batavia Township. Do I have a motion to add it to the agenda? I make the motion. Second. Then moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Humphrey? Aye. Commissioner Hear me, aye. Yes. 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 Okay. <clears throat> then board, I would read the suggested add-on. The recommendation is to adopt resolution number 126-20, resolving to change the name of Charmilly Drive T-526 to Hauser Lane located in Batavia Township as described herein, having found that there is good cause for the name change and that the name change will not be detrimental to the general interest pursuant to section 5541.04 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion to for approval of the resolution? So moved. I'll second. Then move and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Uh, yes, I, I recognize that from a public safety point of view, it's a good idea not to have two disconnected sections of the same highway. 
uh, it makes it very difficult to, for the EMS or fire to, or police to know where they're going. So I, I concur and support this uh, name change. Anything further, board? Nothing. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Any other additions to the agenda today? Not at this time. All right. Then I would move to G. I'm requesting an executive session pursuant to section 121.22, G1 and G3 and G4 of the Ohio Revised Code to first, consider the employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, or compensation of one or more public employees. Second, to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or eminent litigation. And third, to prepare for and conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment, respectively. Do I have a motion to move into executive session? I'll make the motion. Second. Been moved and received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. We will move to executive session. We will return and we, we will conduct further business. Thank you. We are back from executive session. There were no actions taken and no decisions made. We'll move on with our regular prepared agenda. But prior to moving, I'll ask, are there any additions to the agenda to be considered? Uh, yes, sir. We have uh, two potential additions um, for your consideration. Uh, the first one is a proposed add-on uh, to retain outside legal counsel. Um, and the second one is a personnel action that Mr. Hot is here for. Okay. Board, you've heard the, the need for two additional items on the agenda. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda as has been suggested with these two items? I'll make so a motion. I'll second. Been moved and received a second. Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Uh, Greg, could you um, start with the outside legal counsel request? Yes, I have a, um, a request here for a joint application with the prosecuting attorney to the Claremont County Court of Common Pleas for employment of legal counsel for matters relative to a Bureau of Workers' Compensation Claim, BWC claim number 18-195571. Board, you've heard the request for a joint petition with the Claremont County Prosecutor's Office for uh, appointment of outside counsel. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. Second. Been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Holly. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. And the second. Hi, Sandy. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, the next item is a personnel action in the Water Resource Department for Tyreek Delaney, uh, a voluntary demotion to a Water Resource Department maintenance tech one, effective July 25th, 2020. Board, you've heard the request for a, a uh, motion uh, for a personnel action in the Water Resources Department. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the so motion. Moved. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> it's been moved and moved, second <laughs> and second. second. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll give the move to Commissioner Corcoran and the second to Commissioner Humphrey. Okay. <laughs> Any further conversation or discussion? No, thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Commissioner Humphrey. Aye. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Thank you. Any further additions to the agenda, Greg? That is it. Okay. Then I will move on. I'll go back to item H, county staff and elected official discussion. Any further county staff or elected official discussion that needs to happen in today's meeting? Yes, we have Mary Raines uh, here to give a uh, budget update. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. I guess afternoon now. Got two items to update on the uh, budget. The Ohio Department of Job and Family Services has posted the unemployment numbers for Claremont County for June. And we are, our rate dropped from 11.2% in May to 9.4% for June. So we are making a, a comeback there. Uh, we're so not anywhere near the 4.4% you know, that we were the first quarter of the year, but 
we're getting there. Uh, the other is the uh, preliminary auto sales tax for the state's June allocation has come through and it's looking like the county is at 14% above the June of 2019 figures. Now we add that to the 4% preliminary estimate for the gross non-auto sales and we could see uh, an overall increase next month close to our original 3% growth projection. Um, that, you know, we're greatly helped by the fact that our uh, first four months in 2020 were around 7% up. So, you know, that's, we're making adjustments as we go along. Um, with that August being maybe, I'm going to guess around 3% when they get all the adjustments in, we could um, pretty much be right on track within a couple hundred thousand of our year to date for August. Now we're not out of the woods yet because of the resurgence of the, uh, the virus. Uh, so we're gonna be cautiously optimistic. These are actually numbers based on the May, the May sales that are reported to the state. So the receipts in September will be from June and we could expect that those will probably be better than they had been, maybe not quite this much. Um, but then July, August, and September, the last three months that we'll receive this year, and with the resurgence of the virus, it's just really any, anybody's guess if we're gonna continue at that rate of recovery. Um, overall, the revised estimates are still showing 8% below the original budgeted estimate of $30.3 million, which is 5% below 2019, rather than the 3% that we had projected originally to be an increase. Um, that's about all I've got right now. Well, thank you, Mary. And, and, and it's good to hear, it's good to hear that there's some projection uh, there that, um, you know, is better than, than what we originally thought. You know, you plan for the worst and, uh, you, you hope that uh, you get a better outcome. And it sounds like we're gonna have one. Right, and like I said, we're, we're watching it constantly. And anytime any data comes in, we're revising the estimates. So um, may look like we don't know what we're doing, but <laughs> until we get some hard numbers, it's a shot. It's our, it's our best guess. That's right. I, I, I thank the legislature for putting forth the Wayfair decision and allowing us to capture taxes on uh, internet purchases, because that's, I, I'm sure we're seeing much more, although we don't have any d data on that, much more internet purchase. Right, I think that's been a lifesaver for us. Yep. And, and also for all the Claremont County departments and for them taking, you know, this crisis seriously and, uh, you know, pulling back, obviously their expenditures and travel and and uh, hiring except for essential personnel. Greg, you had a you had a comment? No, okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, I will. Thanks, Mary, thanks for, uh, <laughs> for updating us and giving that, us that information, thank you. No problem, you're welcome. You bet. <clears throat> Any other staff or county elected official discussion? We do have one more. Um, okay. We have the COVID finance committee that was put together and just wanted to give a brief update on some of the work they're doing. Brandon has a spreadsheet he'll put up just to kind of show you. As you recall, we received one point, approximately $1.5 million in funding um, uh, from, the, uh, from the state um, in the uh, CARES uh, Relief Act. And so far the, the group has identified 1.1 million that we've already been able to classify as eligible expenses. And as you can see there, it ranges from salaries, uh, supplies, equipment, uh, various other items we were able to, to do as well as payroll. There's some EMA salaries that are eligible for some of this. Uh, we've done some network upgrades since we've had to do a lot of teleworking. Uh, Brandon's group has had to uh, uh, enhance our network to make sure we can do the telework. I think it's working pretty well. And then uh, also the air purification, uh, that's an eligible expense as well. So we've identified 1.1 million. And that leaves us about 450,000 that uh, you have available to decide what you wanna do with um, uh, in the future. And the State Office of Management and Budget did release updated guidelines on how we can spend the money. And the committee has come up with some potential options on how you're able to spend some of these funds for your consideration to discuss over the coming weeks. 
Uh, we do have about two months left to spend this money. And one of those things that is potentially eligible are grants to small businesses. And we did talk about that before, and we thought some of the HUD money would take care of that. And obviously, um, it's just not practical to use that HUD money because of the restrictions put on it. But now you potentially have the ability to do that with small business grants uh, down the road. So we have about $450,000 left. What they've done is in going through this, they've also looked at what's coming in the future, some of the future needs that we're gonna have that are gonna be eligible expenses. So that's already been included in the $1.1 million. Okay. So I don't know if you had any questions or if any discussion you wanna have or any direction you wanna give us going forward with the money. Well, let's let's just talk about, let's talk about the $1.5 million. Just, just noteworthy, the county received $1.5 million just to kind of open up that conversation townships, villages, and cities also received CARES Act funding. That was just distributed through the 2019 local government uh, fund calculation. Um, and just talk about that as far as how much was distributed through the local government fund and, and what you've seen so far. Well, I don't have the exact numbers on what individual townships received, um, but they too, are eligible for the exact same expenses that we are eligible to spend money on too. Well, and, and, and I want to make sure that, you know, the people of Claremont County understand that, you know, this is money that was provided to Claremont County for expenditures that were COVID related, right. but that, however, there was money also, you know, distributed to uh, eligible townships, villages, and cities, you know, through the local government fund to, you know, try to uh, ease the pain on them for monies that they have had to spend out of their general fund to uh, manage the COVID, you know, pandemic. So, and it's important to note that some of this money as well that's here, uh, we have collaborated with the other local governments. So some of this is going uh, for purchases that were made on their behalf as well. So this is a, a, a countywide effort um, on helping with these expenses, but you are correct. Most townships and villages and municipalities did receive a fair a share of this funding in, a, in addition to what the county had received. So they're able to do the exact same things we are with it as well, just because the county does get the share, the bulk share of the money. That's why a lot of it's reported here. And, you know, to talk about the $450,000 and, you know, the fact that that money is going to be available to grants to small businesses, what, what is the definition of that need as far as a grant? Well, what, what are if we would choose to move forward with making money available for small business grants, what what are some of the qualified uh, requests that a small business could make? Well, that's still that is guidance that's just been released. So we have not had time to break down exactly what we could do. If that's something you want to direct us to do, we will certainly look into that and report back to the board as to what our options are with the small businesses. Um, you know, so just their guidance. This is just kind of a, a high level overview. Uh, small business assistance related to required and or voluntary closures and the expenses related to providing those programs, um, workers compensation and other related items for the business. Again, I, we'll need some time to go through all this because this just came, was just released last week. So, but we just wanted to make sure if that was a direction the board wanted us to head in. We're happy to uh, provide that research. And, and you know that would be as as one commissioner, that would be my desire, Commissioner Corcoran, Commissioner Humphrey. I'd like to. Hear yes, I'd like to hear uh, from the committee what their yeah. recommendation is among those options, and how they would manage it if they did uh, grants to any to any organization. How much? How how would they manage that? Okay. I'd like to have their overall, your overall report and recommendations okay. first. Yep. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll direct the uh, committee to look further into uh, the small business loans or grants and um, a recommendation on concretely how to spend the money. Okay. We just wanted to make sure that uh, the board was, we were in the right direction with how we wanted to spend the remaining amount. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other county staff or elected official discussions? Um, Commissioner Painter, if I may, next week's session, July 29th of 2020, um, our session is going to be at 1 p.m. due to a meeting scheduling conflict. Okay. So we will be meeting July the 29th at 1 p.m. instead of our regular 10 a.m. Yes, sir. A. We okay. don't need to vote on, I have a motion or anything to do that. We do not. Okay. We do not. 
one o'clock. Just make sure you just have to give rate. give ample notice under the requirements. Yes, sir. Yep. Any other staff or elected official discussion? None. Then None I would us. go to I. Member comments, board member, any comments today about the meeting or other issues that you wanted to talk about? One of the issues uh, I thought we we could talk about is that uh, I you are aware if you have seen the Sun News today of a proposed project by Duke Energy to install a pipeline, a, a natural gas pipeline from Tate Township to Batavia here in Claremont County along the eastern section of Claremont County. That eastern section has long been uh, not serviced by natural gas. Obviously, there are many agricultural areas out there, but this also moves available gas uh, uh, structure towards the uh, uh, 32, obviously, Appalachian, Eastern Appalachian Beltway. And uh, wanted to make sure you are aware of that and that uh, uh, you have uh, ample time to look into that information. Um, obviously, infrastructure is very, very important to Claremont County. This is uh, a proposal that will uh, enhance the infrastructure in one of our rural areas and make residential gas and, and uh, commercial gas available to the areas between Bethel and and Batavia Township in the village of Batavia. Let me ask a question. Is this residential or is this a pipeline to supply uh, additional gas, high pressure gas up to the 32 area? Both, I understand both. Okay. And they will I be having public- The high pressure piece of it. They will be having public meetings in the near future for that so that the residents obviously get their opportunity to take a look at potential routing. Um, obviously, whatever that routing that would be decided upon would have to be uh, reviewed by the siting board, you know, here in the state of Ohio. So uh, very preliminary at, at the front, exactly where you want it to be and uh, the opportunity for uh, residents to get involved and decide if that's something that, that they want in their particular area of Claremont County and if it's, uh, if it's needed and, and obviously wanted. So want to make sure you're aware of that. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Residential gas is really a, a very positive thing for residences and businesses to be able to hook up to gas because gas is the lowest cost per BTU for heat. Yeah, and, and those areas have long been served, you know, uh, rural Claremont County Heating options there are obviously electric and propane. And you know, and, in some and cases fuel oil. and fuel oil, which Ed, I know you were you may be still familiar with. Is that correct? Yes, I have fuel oil. <laughs> there, there you go. <clears throat> Any other conversation or discussion? We do have some of that information on the uh, CARES Act money for the local governments if you if you wanna go yeah, over that. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so basically the, what this is was based on the uh, 2019 formula, um, just, just some representative townships. For example, Miami Township uh, received close to $210,000, Union Township close to $230,000, and then obviously smaller jurisdictions less. Um, Batavia Township, approximately $105,000. Um, New Richmond, approximately $50,000. Newtonsville, $16,000. So you can see how the distribution was uh, was um, uh, set forth. All in told, it was probably approximately 1.5 million that went to uh, the local jurisdictions beyond the county. Okay, All right. Thank fantastic. You, you know, well well deserved, well needed. So you know, just wanted to make sure that you know, folks know that you know it just didn't come to the county. It's also for you know taking care of all the local governments you know in Claremont County. Only, only other comment to make is that, you know, obviously we've heard a lot about mask usage. We've heard a lot about being a red county and those kind of things. Um, you know, there's nothing that we can't do here in Claremont County. You know, we, we understand what the protocol is for protecting yourself and this virus. You know, we need to use some common sense 
there are obviously combinations of things we can do as far as, you know, hand washing and social distancing and understanding when to employ a mask and when you might choose not to. You know, I would say that uh, if we take this seriously, you know, it's been proposed that uh, we could put this virus on the ground in about four months. You know, um, I'm really looking forward to Julianne's uh, Nisbet, our health commissioner, sharing numbers with us in the near future as to what the current protocol that we're following uh, uh, results in, as far as if we really see those numbers go down and where we're at. So, um, you know, I look forward to her continuing to do updates and kind of, you know, update us on, on um, our efforts and in what the results of those efforts are. So. What I would say is before I ask for a motion to adjourn is that, uh, you know, use your common sense, you know, follow the protocols, keep yourself and your, and your family members safe. You know, COVID-19 is real, you know, it is impacting people. Uh, we are starting to see now that there are people close to us who have family members are being affected by this virus. So be healthy and be safe. Anything else board before I ask for a motion to adjourn? None. Then I'd ask for a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. So moved. A second. Then moved and received a second. Holly, roll call. Commissioner Humphrey? Aye. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. This concludes our Claremont County Board of Commissioners meeting for 7-22-2020. Thanks for joining us. Be safe. And we'll see you next week at 1 o'clock. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being with us.